first thing that we need to do is to go into a web browser and I want you to type in scribblemaps.com into the address bar at the top. Now that's going to come to this website here and we can go directly to create your map now. Now this doesn't require us to have a login and it's also free. So we can remove that little dialog box that, box that pops up there. Now what we'd like to do is to zoom in to your local school. You can already see that we have a beautiful satellite image here and it's going to be at some location on the earth. But we want to make sure it's exactly where your school is. Now for me, I'm going to zoom in to Smithfield. I can do that by typing in this in the search bar at the top or I can use the scroller of my mouse or I could even use the zoom tools over on this upper right hand side. I'm just going to use that search tool to start with and you'll see it takes me directly to Smithfield and I can move my scene around here using that pan tool with my mouse. Now I find it a little bit congested with all these labels everywhere. So I'm going to go down into the bottom right hand side and just tick on satellite and remove all of that extra noise there. What I need to do is to decide first of all where's going to be the outline of my school and in this case it's James Cook University. So I want to know the border around here and then I want to know the area covered by trees. So what I'm going to do first of all is down in this bottom left hand side, I go to create legend. And so I'm going to create those two different types of polygons being the border and the trees. So I tick on polygon here and the first one I'm going to do is call it my boundary. And this is going to represent the boundary of my school or in my case JCU. I'm going to tick on to allow toggle and I can change the colors if I want to here. But I might, what I might do is I might make that one a yellow and then click add. Now I'm going to do that once again for trees. So making sure I've ticked polygon here because trees are a polygon, they're not a line or a point. And I'm going to make my trees green and I might make them a little bit darker as well. So there we go. We can now see that I have two items in my legend, my trees and my boundary. My next job is going to be to actually trace those out on top of my map. The first one I'm going to trace is boundary. So if I click onto boundary, you'll see that I have a number of these tools all the way up the top left. Now I want to choose the polygon tool. So that's going to allow me to draw the outline of my school or my university in this case. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to do this a little bit roughly just to give you an idea of how it's done. And hopefully you'll do a better job when you do your school. So I click around the border here and as you'll see, it's now creating a lovely shape that corresponds to the border of my university grounds. I'll double click that to finish. And there we go, I have my shape. Now, the interesting thing about it is if I go into this upper left hand side here and go to my edit or measure tool, if I click on that, I can now hover over the area that I've just drawn out and it tells me exactly how big my campus is. So for you, your school grounds. Now what you're gonna to need to do is get a pen and paper and write down how big that is and take particular notes so that you know what units is in. So for example, this one says the area is 136.55 hectares. We may need to change those units at some stage, but let's have a look at that and we'll come back to it and just, just see. Now, in our legend, I can now either tick that boundary off so I can now see my, where my trees are, or if I wanted, maybe I could make that transparent so I'd be able to see my trees but still see what I've done for my boundary. So I can go up to this little pencil tool and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit my boundary by using that pencil tool there again. So you see it's now popped up, the boundary here. And if I click on that yellow patch, I can change the opacity. So the opacity is how transparent it's going to be. So let's make that say 40%. And if I update that, now you'll be able to see that I have my border still here, but this time I can see through that, through that yellow. Maybe it's not quite enough and I might need to play with that a little bit more, but you'll be able to play with that in your own time too. Now, the big thing is now that I want to be able to see how much how much space I have covered by my trees on the campus. 
So this time I'm going to click on trees down in my legend and I'm going to use that polygon tool as well. And this time I'm going to trace out areas that are covered by trees on my campus. And you see I'm tracing around and hopefully you'll be a little bit more careful when you're doing this as well. So I'm doing it a little bit rough just so that you get the idea of what I'm doing here. Trace all the way around. And once again, I'm going to double click to finish my shape. And I can pop up here to my measure tool. And here we see that particular area that I've just measured is 5.34 hectares. Now, if that was the only area of trees that were on my school campus, I'd be able to work out the percentage of trees on my school campus by dividing 5.34, the area of trees, by 136.55, by the total area. But we know that I've actually got quite a few more patches of trees, so I'm going to have a little bit of work to do. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to use a pen and paper, or I could do it in a spreadsheet, and write down those numbers for each of my tree patches. And I might even use the little circle tool to get some of these trees in because they're little circles there. So you can use a bit of a mixture of the tools that you want to capture all of your trees. But remember to work out their areas as you go and write them down. Now what you might have seen in these last two ones that I did is they're quite little. So the area is now in meters squared. It makes it a little bit hard if I need to add meters squared with hectares. So let's go and change that and make sure they're in the same units. Down in the bottom left, we have a settings cog. And what we want to do is click on that area unit and change everything to, shall we say, square meters. Maybe it would be square kilometers if that's useful for you. You can have a bit of a play. But let's say square meters. And you'll now see that the area of this particular polygon has, been, has popped up in square meters. So I've got quite a lot of work to do. I'm going to go ahead and continue digitizing all of those little polygons so you'll see what that looks like when I'm done. Before I show you my final map product, I want to bring your attention to a couple little bits of information that are really important that you'll see inside your Scribble Maps window. And they're right down the bottom of your screen. So if you have a look, it tells you who owns the satellite imagery. And this is really important because this is the source of our data. And the other thing that's really important is our scale. So you can see here a little scale bar that shows you just how far 100 meters is. Now let's have a look at my final map. So you'll see that I've got my trees in here. I've got the university boundary and that by understanding the area covered by those patches of trees compared to the overall university, I was able to calculate that the university is covered by 50% tree shade, which is really good. Now you see that I've created a legend here and I also have my north arrow and a scale bar that I created based on what I showed you just before in with that little scale that's on your map when you have a look at scribble maps. I've popped in a nice little inset image here so you can see exactly where in the world James Cook University is. And it's also got my little scale bar down the bottom here as well. And I've even created a small graph that shows how many tree patches I have based on their, on their patch size. So I've got lots of small patches, for example, and I've got one really big patch that you should be able to see on the map there as well. But really importantly, when we create maps, we want to have this other information that I've popped down in the bottom right hand corner of my map. So it tells me who the author is, how I created it, and importantly, where the data have come from in the first place. And that was what I brought your attention to just before in the Scribble Maps view. So showing that the data is, has a copyright 2020 from Kinez, which is the French space agency. And the data also owned by Maxar Technology. So it's a, a commercial imaging company. So we've got all this information on our map. We've got a wonderful title. We've got a border all the way around the map. It looks beautiful and balanced. And that would be my submission for the coolest school.